Good morning, world. I'm Harrison Land, the fuck up who does fuck ups. A man named Steven Spielberg directed a movie about a lonely boy and his lost alien who wants to go home. While they try to communicate with fellow aliens, they form a strong bond, leading to one of the most unique friendships ever placed on cinema. The movie was called E.T. the Extraterrestrial. It was a commercial and critical success, and is considered one of the best movies of all time. But for every movie like E.T., there's always going to be a horrible one that rips off a timeless classic, and the travesty that these producers want to call Macamy. Consider one of the worst movies of all time, this not only rips off the classic Spielberg movie, but it is also an advertising horror, a compilation of horrible acting, an explosion full of bad effects, and the aliens that make me sick just looking at them. And after they saw this movie, the producers hopefully kill themselves. So let's see what kind of drugs they took to think that this movie would be better than E.T. So the movie starts off on a planet far, far away, where we see the family of the most ugliest aliens I've ever seen. Then a spacecraft of some kind comes to the planet and the aliens go take a look. Okay, sweetie, you stay here alone in front of a possible danger while I go on the other side of this machine. Well, hey, at least they love their child. So these are going to be the effects for the movie, huh? We're not even five minutes in this movie and I know it's going to suck. That's a good sign. So the spacecraft flies back to Earth into a place where they check out the spacecraft. Well, wait a minute, the spacecraft is there for three minutes and then goes back to Earth in that specific amount of time? Uh, yeah, I think it takes a lot more time than that. Fuck it. So they check the craft because there's a malfunction, but they get a bit of a surprise. Oh, come on, that's a half-assed animatronic puppet! Don't these people put any effort at all? Yes, let the aliens go run amok on Earth. Whoa! Fuck the peace-loving E.T. These aliens touch one thing and the movie goes Michael Bay all of a sudden. Also, are you telling me nobody heard that explosion? The aliens escape but leave one behind. That doesn't sound at all like another movie, does it? Roger, we see him. He's heading towards the north bend. The little alien fingers the fence shut the fuck up as it... Oh god, these effects make the effects on Jack Frost look like Inception. Ten minutes in the movie and I would rather be watching Jack Frost. <laughs> so the alien escapes, bumps into a car which swings out of control and causes an accident. No, 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 that can't happen. The truck wasn't a ramp so the car would have smashed in the back of it. That can't happen. Okay, this doesn't happen either. The crash from the Blues Brothers were more realistic than this. The alien goes into the car being driven by a mother and two kids, without them noticing, of course. I think it was a drunk? It's probably an ADUI. What? An alien driving under the influence. Let's ignore this horrible joke. What kind of laugh was that? Was he coughing while he was trying to laugh? everything all right? You tell me. This won't take a minute. All right, you can go. Go on. After that brief search, the family that we're all going to focus on is going to a new house. Eric, wake up. We're almost there. Eric? <sighs> I guess a child doesn't know that there are cars on the highway. Next he'll be telling me that music stores sell music. So they drive into the suburbs where the plot will be taking place. So one of the kids' name is Eric and he's in a wheelchair. In other words, this will be our main character. He and his brother Mike are in awe of the new house. They meet a girl who was communicating with the Earth Spirits. This little girl needs to get laid. So the boys go back in the house when the alien follows them and the girl spots it. The alien goes around the house while hiding itself from his family. If it wants to hide from the family, couldn't it just stay in the car or run away? But it decides to look at Eric because he's in a wheelchair. Oh 
Oh my god, the car's possessed! Your mother sucks cocks in hell. No, it's absolutely nothing. So after finding absolutely nothing in the house, he goes outside where the hippie girl is. You looking for your friend? Yeah, he went down the hill. Did you get a good look at him? Yeah, he's real cute. I beg your pardon? He's real cute. You think that the alien who looks like it's gonna blow someone is cute? What kind of drugs are you smoking? What did he look like? Is your friend you don't even know what he looks like? I was just kidding. Who hired this kid? Courtney Love on drugs is a better actor than he is. So the little girl is named Debbie, and her sister's name is Courtney. And they go back into the house when his brother comes into the picture. There's something weird going on. Look at this. What? There were footprints here. Somebody was just in my bathroom taking a shower. Yeah, right. You think she's... Ah! Serious. The tea... The lamp. Well, Sherlock Holmes here thinks he saw the ghost. What did the ghost do it? Something was just in my bedroom. It jumped over my head. Yeah, right? What thing? I never saw it. I just kept doing things. I'm not lying, Mom. I swear it. No, really. I'm not lying. My facial expression is telling the truth. Later that night, the alien looks into the house and sees the family doing various things. Now, come on. I want you to stop worrying about this. Did you lock all the windows? Yes. Good. I was thinking maybe it wasn't such a bad thing anyway. All it did was take a shower and drink a soda. Well, maybe it was one of the neighborhood kids or something. I'm sure there's a rational explanation. Okay, the intruder may or may not be from this world and- <laughs> Oh yeah. I forgot to mention that the little alien is calling out to its family using hand signals and whistling. Yes, it communicates through whistling. So not only is this movie ripping off E.T., but it is also ripping off R2-D2. I would much rather have gone with Master Luke than stay here with you. The next day, the alien uses the toy car to communicate with Eric. It shows that it's playful by drilling holes into the wall, destroying the living room, and cutting a hole through the door. I'm not sure that this alien is much friendly as a destructive hell spawn. Michael? Eric? Everything's ruined. It's totally ruined. It wasn't me, Mom. It's the little creature. I saw it. The house is totally destroyed. What do you want me to say? I don't want you to say anything! Hey, that's what I've been saying about the horrible dialogue in this movie. So Eric gets some fresh air after that brief argument. So he starts going down a hill, in a wheelchair. I can't see this going well at all. <laughs> well, I didn't see that coming! The little alien helps him get back on land. A little alien helps a boy five times the size in the heavy wheelchair to go to safety. So Eric is in bed after the incident when he gets a visit from Debbie. What is he, some sort of ghost? I don't know what he is. You should back me up. Wouldn't do any good. They only believe what they want to believe. I can't believe I would rather be watching Jake Lloyd and Star Wars than these two. These two don't even sound invested. Why should I care? Mom wants to go, Deb. Okay, I'll see you later. Give me a call. The hell was that? Give me a call. It's like she turned into a crow when she said that. Give me a call. Give me a call. <laughs> I'm Courtney, Deb's sister. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Me too. It's McDonald's, huh? Yeah. Why don't you stop by for a Big Mac? Wow, that is blunt advertising. I mean, if you think that isn't blunt advertising, you obviously haven't seen the rest of the film. So the mother has to go to her first day of work, leaving Eric and Mike with each other. Now what's her first job in ten years? You know what I feel like? A Big Mac? Man, it's a genius. Movie, could you stop sucking the fast food chain's cock? It's not worth it. In fact, don't people already go to McDonald's without the help of this movie? Why shove it in their faces? Ah, uh, boy do I need a snack. Later that night, 
Eric sets out the trap for the little alien using Coca-Cola. We haven't gone four minutes and we've already had another advertisement. This movie's so blatant in this advertising that I would rather watch another movie. Like watching the detectives, available at a video store near you. But Debbie sneaks into his house through his window, wanting to help catch the little alien. So the alien falls for the trap and sucks him into a vacuum, but then... What the fuck am I watching? Stop! Please stop! This is horrible! Oh, God! How much more of this will I have to take? 50 minutes? There's only 50 minutes left? Oh, Christ, let's just get this over with. So after the events that destroy parts of the house, they make a drink Coca-Cola. Yes, because that's the only thing that will make it feel better. What makes me feel better is a pack of s'mores Pop-Tarts, available at the Fortinos near you. So the mother comes home and Debbie escapes so she wouldn't get in trouble, but so does the alien. So they try to explain to their mother that the alien is real, but again, she doesn't listen. So the next morning, they wake up to find the house is clean. The boys assume the alien did it, but their mother thinks otherwise. Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. We didn't do it, Mom. He came back. Come on. Are you telling me this thing came in and cleaned up the house? Well, think about it. Would we do something like this? Yeah, because us guys don't know how to do chores. So Eric is about to go to a birthday party for a person he doesn't know. While everyone else is out of the house, he and Debbie go into the house to discuss the alien, while the cops are watching over them because they know the alien is in the house. Nothing was used. Nothing was said, but the cops somehow knew that there was an alien among them. How do they know that the alien is in that exact place? There were other cars driving at the crash site, so why this specific one? And why didn't we see them come to this conclusion in the movie? Show stuff! If you're gonna rip off a better movie, at least tell stuff! It's like if in Back to the Future when Marty went to sleep in his room in 1985 and woke up in another room in 1955, and then in the middle of the movie, it was set up because of a DeLorean with a flux capacitor that he could time travel and we were supposed to figure out through the bad storytelling. It. Does. Not. Work. Use. Your. Brains. You. Fucktards. So Eric and Debbie see the officer's car in front of the house and then they see that the alien is watching TV. They name the alien Mac. Why? If you don't know why after seeing the movie's blunt advertising, I suggest you declare yourself brain dead. Like E.T., Mac is also an acronym, which means Mysterious Alien Creature. It turns out that it is sick, and it needs to get back with its family. Before finding out where the alien came from, it's an alien, so you would think it came from a fucking planet. Debbie's mother is outside waiting for them in the car outside. So what do they do? Dress the alien like a teddy bear and bring them along to the birthday party. You kids are fucking stupid, aren't you? You couldn't have just left it at home dressed it like the teddy bear and put it with the other toys so it could blend in when the officers sneak around the house? You're risking to expose the alien? Could these people get any stupider? Let's just keep watching. Well, what do you think? Follow them. So you're not gonna bother checking the house, huh? We know that the alien is in the car with them, but the cops don't know that. If the alien was in the house, they would have followed them anyways. Why did they have the alien with them to begin with? Why didn't they just leave the alien back in the house if the officers were gonna follow them anyway? Why is it that the inept officers in Matilda are better than the inept officers in this movie? Give them some credit, at least they know how to do their fucking job by finding evidence in the family garage. It's called a search warrant! Fucking use it! And for that matter, why the fuck am I still watching this garbage? Oh god damn it! If this movie was a dog, I'd castrate it. If this movie was a dying person, I would suggest assisted suicide. If this movie was a baby in the womb, I'd... So the officers follow the car as they go to the birthday party. And where is the party taking place? Okay people, this is no longer blunt advertising. This is someone going down on someone else, not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but nine times! And look at all those kids just dancing on the road. It's like the movie is telling us that a place where animal parts are eaten daily is the happiest place on earth. Coach, 
How's it going? Yeah, we can't have a movie with McDonald's in it without Ronald McDonald making a cameo appearance. This went from someone going down on someone else a few times to 100% full blown doggy style fucking. Oh, Matt, give me that. Hey, moron, I thought you were supposed to be discreet, not draw fucking attention to yourself. Hi, Michael. The thing I was calling you about, it's in the teddy suit. Oh, no way, so cute. Yeah, real cute. Listen, those guys were following us. They're here. So I guess the plan is to quietly sneak out of the place before they're spotted. I mean, the movie couldn't possibly be stupid or otherwise. Where in this movie does it say that there should be a dance number? And it's a good thing that they all just so happen to have synchronized choreography. Oh, wait, what the fuck? I thought the point of dressing Mac as a teddy bear was to hide him away from the people who want him. Why the fuck is he drawing attention to himself? That's like killing someone and when the police try to find you, you're literally firing a gun in front of their faces. That's just so stupid. What the fuck is wrong with this alien? So how long will it take for the guys who are looking for Mac to find Mac? And where are the kids who are supposed to protect him? They're enjoying it. There are people here who are going to catch him. Why don't you just take him now and run away, you fucking retards? You know what? I can fucking pad this out too. Watch. But then the bad guys come and Eric and Mac run away from the McDonald's slash dance studio. You know, if the whole thing was a distraction, and it wasn't a very good one, especially when the thing you're keeping away is the one distracting! I never thought I'd say this, but Cool World made more sense than this. Why the fuck are you throwing off the clothes? You're just exposing an alien out into the open! And for that matter, the bad guys came in cars, right? So why are they running after them? You can afford to lose some time. Besides, a boy on a wheelchair with an alien on his lap is not going to be hard to find. I mean, we are talking about the same alien who... Uh, yeah, fuck it. Oh. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Wow, nice lip movement there, honey. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Keep it up, and you'll be a better ventriloquist than Jack Frost. Ah! So Eric is rescued by the three other kids, and they drive off. Come on, the music's ripping off Back to the Future! Do the kids stop so they can shout exposition? There's the Wicks in Palmdale, it's about 20 miles from the crash. We have to go there! What do you think? I think we should call your mom. Look, she's not gonna understand, she's just gonna tell us to turn him in. I know no one's interested, would I to save- I don't care what you think because your line reading was awful. So they decide to go find Mac's family. Like this. Here, see if he likes this. Okay, this movie is officially just an excuse to get product placements in. This has gone from doggy style to the 69 assault. How many people had to go down on someone else to get their product placements in? And why do I get the feeling that the product companies regret putting their products into this movie? Mac tries to communicate with its family near a bunch of windmills. I'm sure they explain, but I no longer care anymore. Actually, I never did in the first place. Max senses that the family is in an abandoned cave. They rescue the family and go into the car. Sarah, a mess! It's okay, he's not the hat. Look, maybe we should go public. If we can get him on the news, everyone is gonna wanna help. Excuse me, you fucking moron, but... Um, wasn't the point of rescuing the aliens was to keep them away from people? What the fuck is this idea about showing the aliens on national television? This is literally like killing someone, having their blood all over your clothes, and walking past a bunch of cops. 
It was never a good idea, and the consequences will fuck you up. So they stop by at a gas station. While Courtney and Mike go in for supplies, the aliens see a woman drinking something. And because these things are the most unsettled things in movies, they smash a window and grab the drink. I can see where Matt gets the stupidity from. So the aliens get out of the van and into a store, exposing themselves in front of the whole store. People, I have complained about stupid characters in the past. I've always said that they make movies much more horrible because of their decisions. And I always want to kill myself rather than watch the rest of the movie because I hate it so much. But then I always find a way to survive it. But, but this time, the aliens, along with the kids, are the biggest fucking morons I've ever seen! I thought the whole point of this whole fucking trip was to hide away from people and not make them exposed like a sore fucking thumb! What is wrong with this movie? Do you pay attention to what it's doing? This is unbelievable! What the fuck is wrong with you, movie? What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay. Pull it together, Harrison. Just... Pull it together. We can get through this. Back on the soda. Hey! Hey! Put that down! I guess these people never seen a poorly paper mache alien before. So the kids arrive to save the aliens, but not before the police show up. You, you stand back now, I'm warning you. No, they don't understand you! He's telling the truth! Tell him to back off! No! <laughs> Look out! They took my gun and they don't even know how to use Earth weapons, you fucking twat! So the kids are pulled out of the store while the aliens are barricaded in it. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, the aliens walk out of the store with the police just standing around. I mean, I know these things don't understand English, but you could just do this. I mean, even a three-year-old knows what this means. <laughs> hey, you fucking morons. Why are you shooting at the gas station? You know what's going to happen, right? Okay, I doubt that a gas explosion would actually blow up the frickin' building. Also, why did you shoot at the aliens when the kid was going right towards them? I'd put my life in the hands of Chief Wiggum than any of these idiots. So a helicopter comes in with his mother on board and goes to see her now dead child. Don't try to have development now, this movie's gonna be over in 10 minutes. And even though Eric was right near the explosion, there doesn't seem to be any bruises on him. Actually, I don't even think that the wheelchair will be still standing in that same spot, but it turns out that the aliens did survive the explosion. They say Eric is dead, so how do they heal him? This is like that other movie. You know what? Fuck it. The movie's almost over. So Eric is nursed back to health, and there is one more final scene before the movie is finished. That I will bear faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear arms on behalf of the United States of America when required by the law. I'm sorry. Let me go over this again. A group of aliens who don't know the meaning of the words stop, put that down, or ANYTHING that is spoken by humans. However, they understand when they're being sworn in, which is spoken by someone who is speaking the same language they don't understand? So the aliens and humans live in harmony, with the words, We'll be back, is flashed on the screen making this 100% ironic, and the movie thankfully ends. Well, this movie was horrible, and I can put this movie in just four short sentences. Horrible acting, horrible effects, a horrible ripoff of a Thomas classic, and horribly blunt advertising. All these together make this movie a critical and commercial disaster, and the sequel was eventually shelved, meaning some fucktard thought this movie was good enough for a sequel. I'm Harrison Lane, the fuck up who does fuck ups. And remember, buy Monster Energy Drink, available at a convenience store near you.